All right. Good evening, mga kameta. Kamusta kay John? I hope you had a good day. And uh, alam ko, marami sa inyo ay uh, nagtitransition na into holiday. So kung hey uh, you know, uh, our best wishes to our Chinoy brothers and sisters. I mean, this is yet another reminder of how uh, profound and beautiful the Chinese civilization is. And this is another reminder na sana, despite all our, or in spite of all uh, yung mga hidwan natin with China sa West Philippine Sea, despite all of our concerns, legitimate concerns about the communist system sa China, at the end of the day, let's not forget yung deep ties natin, cultural, people-to-people -people ties natin, spiritual ties natin in many ways. Uh, not only with our fellow uh, kababayans from uh, Chinoy, but also with China and the Chinese civilization. So, once again, Kong Efa Choi, and uh, Happy Chinese New Year, and may the Year of Dragon be a blessed one uh, to our Chinoy brothers and sisters, and for everyone who, in one way or another, is tethered dito sa Chinese culture and civilization. Palikan natin itong uh, topic na to. So, today I'm giving my talk a little bit earlier than usual, uh, precisely because, of course, uh, I, I really felt na mahalaga na pag-usapan natin na kaagad ito. I think this is a big, 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 big moment. I think this is a very, very big deal because I think this doesn't only have political implication, but it also has moral implications, all right? And the context of our conversation today, mga kameta, is this. Majority ng ating mga kababayan, they want accountability. Or at least, in theory, bukas sila sa prospect of ICC coming into the Philippines and going after those people who oversaw mass murders right and left in the name of a fake drug war. Sobrang malaking issue ito. Just to be absolutely clear, lahat tayo galit. Ewan ko dun sa iba. Pero lahat tayo galit sa mga trapos, lahat tayo galit sa kriminal, lahat tayo galit sa, sa droga, sa lahat mga yan. But the question always was, tama ba yung paraan ng nakaraan na administration when it came to dealing with the problem of drugs and criminality? Gumana ba siya? And if ever it worked, which it didn't, aminado din si Digong, um, at what cost? So, even if we were to agree with the questionable claim na naging mas safe ang Pilipinas dahil sa drug war ni Digong, the reality is that the price was too high. The price was not only too high, the price was unacceptable. And parati sa akin, yung moral question was, Saan ang ating mga kababayan, saan yung kanilang puso at damdamin nung panahon na pinapatay yung mga kabataan katulad ng Kian de los Santos? Unfortunately, Kian de los Santos was just one of many cases na mga nasama lang sa kota. Right? Ito yung pinaka-problema nung panahon ng drug war. Kota system. At yung whole nanlaban system. Right? Madali lang. Pagtripan mo isang tao, isama mo sa kota, yari siya, Tapos ang excuse mo lang, ay ba, nanlaban yun, di ba? Tapos i-plant po lang ng barel yan. How many people, right, lost their lives like that? How many families were devastated because of that? And in the same way, how many real big fish? Hindi yung mga galing lang kung saan-saan na mga hindi natin alam. I mean, honestly, yung mga ibang big fish na sinabi ni Digong, yung mga lugar na galing sila, do, can you even point it out on the map? Hindi. Pero on top of my head, marami tayong mga maiisip na mga notorious na drug lords na hindi hinule or walang nangyari sa kanila. And wag natin kalimutan, dun sa rally ni Digong, na nilangaw daw, sabi ni uh, Ronald Leamas, ilan, ilang ba? O oh, partida, baka 3 to 5,000 lang pumunta. O oh, partida lang yan. Ha? Na nakita ko nga, dun sa speech may mga empty chairs pa. O oh, sabi natin hindi nilangaw. Okay? Or, uh, or hindi na ano. Um, sabi natin, sige, may mga doon. Doon sa speech niya, kung mahalala, no, sinabi ni Digong na etong kasalukuyan na presidente natin ay nakita niya sa drug list. Nung time, pa siya, nung time na mayor pa siya. So, I, obviously, I think he, is, he meant nung time na presidente pa siya. Kasi kung mayor lang siya noon, anong, anong pake niya, di ba? Bakit siya bibigyan ng datos ng national government uh, about the whole national situation kung mayor ka lang ng Davao? But anyway, I think he meant when he was the president. Naalala niyo yung sinabi niya, hindi ko inano si BBM dahil magkakaibigan kami or 
magkakilala kami. O inamin niya na hindi pala sila ganun ka-friendly. So dahil lang magkaibigan kayo or friendly lang kayo, hindi mo na lang ano? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Essentially, umamin siya na arbitrary. Sobrang arbitrary yung application ng war on drugs. Na kung kilala ka niya or kaibigan kayo or political allies kayo, kahit nandun ka sa listahan, he will not go after you. And by the way, there's no evidence whatsoever na tama yung sinasabi niya. In the same way, there's absolutely no evidence na yung mga sinasabi niya may tatlong million, apat na million na drug addict, yung sinasabi niya na eto ay ganyan, eto yung mga narco-politicians, whatever. Absolutely, wala siyang na-provide na totoong abidensya. Haka-haka lang. Historia. Historia. Diba? Katulad ng sinabi ng isang governor ng Zambonga, after ng hanas-hanas na Mindanao separation niya, sabi niya, Sir, huwag ka masyadong mag-historia, historia. Alright? So, purong historia lang nangyari. At hindi lang purong historia, purong trahedyang nangyari sa ating bayan. So, ang malaking tanong sa akin is, yes, agree ako, gusto natin maging mas safe yung ating bayan. And please lang, don't give me this nonsense about, oh, ikaw kasi ganyan, elitista ka na. Galing akong probinsya, okay? Galing akong Baguio, okay? Hindi ako galing sa Manila, hindi ako galing sa Forbes, hindi ako galing sa... Ito pa yun, natatawa ako kasi maraming tao na nagsabi na mas maganda ang nangyari ngayon dahil sa war on drugs ni Digong. Ito yung mga tao na kilala ko na may condo sa Forbes. Ay, sorry, may condo sa BGC. Wala pang condo sa Forbes. Or may malaking bahay sa, sa Forbes or Dasmarinas. Or nandun sa gated communities. Ironically, sa mga sobrang vocal na supporters ng War on Drugs, marami akong kilala dyan. Of course, kilala ko sila kasi nag-disagree kami ng big time uh, dahil hindi ako sangayan dun sa paraan ng War on Drugs. Sangayan ako sa intention, wala siyang tal- 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 talagang intention ni ano. Uh, disagree sa... Marami dun. Ito yung mga nakatira dun sa mga awal. Hindi ko na natin Not necessarily just Forbes and Dasmarinas types. Marami dyan nakatira sa mga gated communities, mayayaman, mga million-million dollar yung kanila mga bahay. Yung mga kotse nila, magarang. Alright? So marami yung kilala mga tao na they were cheating on this war on drugs because they know na never naman darating sa kanila yung mga EJK or yung mga nanlaban or mga all sorts of abuses. Gated community nga sila eh. Hindi nga makapasok yung mga ano dun eh. So, please don't give me this whatever. Tapos yung iba dyan, uh, gusto, na, gusto tayo i-dismiss. Sabi nila, oh, ikaw, kasi elitista ka na. Wait, wait, wait lang. Ang dami mong pera, pang internet, pang Twitter, uh, yung English mo para mas konyo pa sa akin. Tapos, magpanggap ka na mas, na, ako pa yung elitista. At, hindi ka. at let me be absolutely clear about it. Si Rizal ay galing sa isang mayaman na pamilya. So what? Uh, by the way, hindi nga ako magaling sa mayaman na pamilya. But I'm saying, so what kung galing ka sa mayaman na pamilya? Does that mean na wala kang malasakit? Na wala kang... Uh, Rizal understood the reality of the Philippines better than most people. Kaya nga Rizal became Rizal. And Rizal was not... You know what I'm saying? He came from an elite background. But he had noble oblige. A sense of obligation to the nation. He bothered to research. He bothered to look at the facts on the ground. And marami sa mga... Alam natin, yung mga tumulong sa Espanya... Para yung mga mapangapi, marami dun sa mga tumulong sa mga Amerikano, tumulong sa mga trapo. Alam natin yung mga background nila. So, let me be absolutely clear about this. Yung argument, yung argument, okay, yung argument na, ay, hindi mo alam yun kasi elitistic ka, whatever. Funny thing is, maraming mga nagsasalitang ganun. Ito yung mga time, maraming, ito yung mga tao na may, may pera pang internet, may pera na pang ano, magkalat-kalat online, etc. Uh, at alam ko naman yun eh, marami naman sa mga yun. Ano lang yun eh, propagandist lang naman sila eh. Or they're just trying to justify the situation or worse, wala silang malasakit sa ating mga kababayan because they know that 99.9% ng mga biktima ng extrajudicial killings ay galing sa mga pinakamahirap na pamilya sa ating bayan. Galing sa mga pinaka-underprivileged na community sa ating bayan. So ito po yung nakakalungkot. Ito po yung nakakalungkot na nangyari over those years. Now having said that, I always had faith in the Filipino people. I always felt na deep inside, ang ating mga kababayan, they want a decisive leader. Agree ako dyan. They want real change. Agree ako dyan. And at the same time, they also want justice and a humane way of dealing with the problems of the society. 
Naintindihan ko, maraming frustration, maraming kapalpahan yung mga iba't ibang administration, mga dilaw, uh, yung mga royo, yung mga hindi dilaw, mga populista, tulad ni ERAP, whatever. Gets ko yan. Marami silang kapalpahan. Nagigets ko yung frustration natin sa ating sistema. But I always also had faith that at some point, at some point, people, at some point, people, will also realize that there's the right way of fighting against evil and events against wrong. There's a better way of fighting against crime. There's a better way of fighting against drugs. And there's a better way of governing the nation, to be very absolutely clear about this. Now, to be clear about this, for a very long time, ang rinig natin is, De, si Digong, napaka-popular yan, ganito, ganyan. Oy, yung war on drugs, napaka-popular yan. So, ang implication dyan is, yung war on drugs and all of those EJKs and horrible things that happen, may consent yan at hindi lang consent, may support pa ng majority. Well, that was the... But I had a serious problem with that claim. And my, my, my problem with that claim was not just because, feel ko lang, it's because the data always told me that much, medyo nuanced. Medyo conditional ang suporta na ating mga kababayan dito sa war on drugs na yan. I'll give you examples. So before we go, dito sa latest survey ng SWS na pinapakita na majority of the Filipino people support an ICC probe. Let's first look at what the Filipino people were saying about the war on drugs itself. Interestingly, pag tinignan mo yung mga surveys nung panahon ni Digong Bato, panahon ni Digong Bato, Bato, uh, Hindi totoo na yung suporta kay sa war on drugs in Digong ay categorical. This is a very interesting survey. So, look at the established survey. <laughs> and this is where, okay, I have slight disagreement with some of the people. Ang basa ko dito, yung popularity ni Digong, a lot of that also was in the climate of fear. And we know in climate of fear, People's perceptions is a bit distorted, right? When people are in fear, are anxious, basic ano lang yan, psychology lang yan. When they're asking surveys, when they're asked about their perceptions of reality, perception of governance and politics, una una magingat sila. Pangalawa, they may self censor, and pangatlo, they may actually psychologically convince themselves that everything is okay so that they can cope with the reality. It's a defense mechanism. It's a basic defense mechanism. Now, just to be clear, na-interview po natin mga kaibigan natin from survey agencies, katulad ni uh, my very good colleague, uh, si Dr. Ron, uh, Ronnie uh, Holmes of Pulse Asia. And, and he reassured us that they have all sorts of measures to make sure, mga protocols, na sisiguraduin nila na yung mga tao na in-intervene nila sa Pulse Asia, hindi sila natatakot or hindi sila na-intimidate or walang nakabantay sa kanila, natanod or whatever. I agree with him. I think they're doing their best. At the same time, I also stand by my argument that in, in, in situations of extreme uncertainty and anxiety, people tend to not only self-censor, they tend to psychologically, uh, you know, uh, cope with things by developing, imagine, imagined versions of reality. Kung hindi kayo naniwala sa akin, go and live in countries na like Russia or China or authoritarian countries. Guess what? I've been even in North Korea, right? I can assure you, you can meet people in North Korea, let's say. In theory, I've been in North Korea. In theory, you go to North Korea, you meet a person, sabi natin, even if no one is watching that person, even if 100% sure na itong tao na hindi siya binabantay in her knee survey, Almost automatically, ang instinct ng tao, 9 out of 10 times, in fact, 9.9 .9 out of 10 times, no? Ang gagawin nila is, they err on the side of caution, or they kind of internally justify yung nangyayari sa kanila. In a way, nasasabi nila, magaling si Kim Jong-un. So actually, authoritarian systems and climates of fear have a distortion effect on, Philipp uh, on, not on, Philipp on human beings' political perceptions and all. In fact, that's how I can, uh, that's why... That's how we can make sense of how Germany went completely fascist, how Italy went completely fascist. Uh, and, and I can also give examples of not necessarily fascist countries, but authoritarian populist countries. Yung mga kulto-kulto, di ba? Um, so there's a, lo a lot of element of herd mentality also. It's not, also. it's not only distortion and coping mechanism. My element din ito ng uh, herd mentality. Eh, gusto na lahat. It's like fashion. It's like trend. 
it happens also in politics. Ang tawag dyan is uh, herd mentality, right? There's a lot of scientific studies on that, including in economics, behavioral economics, like why very intelligent people make big, big mistakes in, for instance, stocks, uh, you know, investing in certain bad stocks. And then, uh, and then when they investigated it, they saw the element of herd mentality. Now, a lot of that also has to do with evolutionary biology, no? Because when we were, when we were, when we were, uh, when we were in earlier stages of development as human beings, pag ikaw ay na-ostracize sa community mo, patay ka. You're on your own. Good luck surviving on your own. So there was a lot of evolutionary biology pressure on our, our, on our brains, essentially, is to conform. And makikiride ka dun sa uso. So I can go on and on about, about the science of how climates of fear distort political perceptions. All right? Now, going back to this, the interesting thing is, nung tinanong, kitang-kita sa survey niya, nung tinanong ng tao, anong tingin nyo dun sa war on drugs? So, in general, so okay lahat. Okay, tama lang yan. War on drugs, labanan natin ng mga kriminal. Okay, agree din ako dyan. Go lang tayo dyan. But, interestingly, vast majority of Filipinos also expressed concern na baka maging biktima sila ng extrajudicial killings. So look at this survey, for instance, from December 2016 to March 2017 to June 2017 and December 2018, right? Ang tanong, extent of worry that respondent or someone known to him will be a victim of extrajudicial killing or EJK. This is a survey between December 26 to December 28. In December 2016, 45% were extremely worried, very worried. 33% were very worried. Only 10% were not too worried and 12% not worried at all. Baka mga may iba dyan, ano? Mga ano natin, mga may yaman natin friends, gated communities. So, 45% plus 33%, that's almost 8 out of 10 Filipinos by 2016 were worried, worried that they'll be victims of extrajudicial killings. Numbers were similar next year, March 2017. 37% very worried, 36% somewhat worried. Very worried again, tumaas in June 2017, 41% very worried, somewhat worried, 32%. In December 2018, 42% very worried, somewhat worried, 36%. So, 8 out of 10 Filipinos were worried that they will be victims of extrajudicial killing. This is from 2016 to end of 2018. So how on earth are you telling me that people were 100% okay with everything that was happening? This is not true. And this is where I disagree with a lot of literature out there. There's a lot of literature that I explained. But the idea na yung mga Pilipino ayos sa demokrasya is wrong. The idea na mga Pilipino ay walang compassion is wrong. But the idea that the Filipino people may have been so desperate, not all, but a significant majority may have been so desperate that they were open to authoritarian leader? That's true. I call it disciplinary politics. Ang source pa is SWS. Ipopost ko dito yung full video. Ito ah. Oh, yung mga hindi nakikita dito. Don't worry guys, ipopost ko rin yung full version later on. But I'm just showing you the example, the clear, clear example, na vast majority of Filipinos were wor worried about extrajudicial killings. Hindi nila gusto yung EJK. Takot sila na may EJK sila. So, yun ang hindi nakikita Yun ang pinakamalaking problema pagdating dun sa mga analysis ng war on drugs at saka popularity ni Digong. It was never a categorical support of how Digong approached this issue. It was always with a caveat. It was like, we are for war on drugs, but wag sana may JK. But again, remember, most people during that time were feeling, you know, desperate. Were feeling weak. Were feeling vulnerable. So, naiintindihan ko bakit hindi masyadong maraming tao ay nagprotesta. Or, or, and, and naalala ko yan, katulad yung mga, yung mga nagkakomment dito ng mga syunga. Okay, Bablock natin ha. Ito pa yung nangyari. I'll say this again ha. O, user, uh, ano, o, yung mga block, ibablock natin dito. Yung mga, mga books na ganyan, marami sila nung time na yan eh. I remember very well. Nung time na yan, Lalabas ka lang sa social media. You just say anything na hindi supportive dun sa war on drugs. You say anything that is close to not fully endorsing that, dadagsan ka ng mga trolls. Kakawawain ka ng mga trolls online. And it's, I, I won't be surprised, 
marami din mga fanatiko and pakulto-kulto dyan or mga nagpabudol-budol dyan na binubuli nila yung mga may contrarian points of view. So that's where I'm seeing yung element of conformity or or why hindi ganyan kalaki ang 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 ang, ang backlash or mga protest laban sa kanila. And aminin natin, mahina din kasi yung opposition natin, napakahina ng opposition. Tingnan mo naman yung mga leaders ng leader ng opposition na iba diyan. Uh, inaatak atak sila, binabastos sila every day kung ano anong sinasabi ng mga walang yang mga vloggers na yan. Anong ginawa nila? Dignified silence? How can you have dignified silence when the country is falling apart? This is not about dignity. This is about standing the ground. This is about, well, as our friends and rappers say, holding the line. This is about fighting back. This is about giving people a sense of agency and po- empowerment. And that was precisely what was lacking. Jan po galing yung aking frustration with opposition. Because three years, four years, five years, hindi sila... Lumalaban, at the rate they should be fighting. Now, of course, ngayon marami matapang eh. Marami matapang kasi ang presidente natin, alam mo naman, BBM, may advice pa siya about love life. O kanina, may advice pa si BBM about taking care, self-care, o baka kay Bea Alonzo yung in- invitan, uh, ang ano niya, ang, ang, sorry, ang, 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 ang advice niya. Sorry, maingay kasi yung may daddy ko dyan, ngayon na ko. Um, kasi, um, wait lang. I mean, of course, mas relax ang panahon ngayon. So, yung mga Johnny Come Latest dyan, ang point ko is, yung time na yan, nakakatakot talaga. Nakakatakot talagang, ano, hindi lang, forget about lumaban or magprotesta, nakakatakot na magbigay na contrarian point of view. And that's precisely the reason why nagkaroon ng itong misconception or misunderstanding ng majority ay gusto ng mga ganyan klaseng war on drugs na violente, na may EJK, mga ganun. But that was never, never true. Because as I show you in the data here, o, oh, dun sa mga, eto, eto. As I show in the data here, as I, as I show in my, <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. As, as I showed in, in, in the data here, as I showed in the data here, tingnan nyo, o, oh. oh, eto yung pinapakita ko, ah. Okay, ito yung mga, sorry ah, yung mga, ito yung pinapakita kong data. So yung mga nakikita yung red and pink, yun yung mga takot na may JK or, or very concerned na may JK sila. So ipopost natin dyan, don't worry about it. So the data is very clear. This is from December 2016 to December 28. Almost 8 out of 10 Filipinos ay takot na may JK. So how on earth, how on earth is that mga kameta? Anong invite ka namin? Gumawa ka ng totong account muna, okay? May mga iba dyan dyan nyo. Ayan, ayan, ayan. Ayan, <laughs> ayan na y- ito yung mga, ito yung mga low-life troll na ngayon nagtatroll sa akin sa TikTok. Good luck sa'yo. Punta kayo sa Facebook, YouTube, mag-usap tayo. Ito mga, ano to, mga kulto-kulto, mga fanatic na yan. Ito yung mga dahilan na natatakot ang mga tao magsalita. Perfect example, bakit hindi makapag-express. Parati ko sinisabi, kung sa tingin mo mas matalino ka at may masabi kang mas maganda, E di argue mo na mabuti, bakit ka mag-insulto, bakit ka magte-threaten? Ibig sabihin, hindi ka mananalo sa, sa matinong argumento. Nang tetrol lang kayo at kumikita lang kayo. Well, ito lang masasabi ko. You had six years to intimidate us, hindi gumana. Good luck na lang sa inyo ngayon kung gusto nyo mag-troll sa atin and all. Now, let's go back to this issue. Let's go back to this issue. Let's go back to this issue. Sorry, ah, may, 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 may parang bata tayo dito. Okay. Ito, balikan natin itong issue na ito. Ah. Now, so this survey proves to you very clearly na the war on drugs of Digong was never categorically supported through and through. It was always supported with a caveat. There was a support of the intention of President Digong or supposed intention of President Digong, although nasa niyo mga tatong big fish, but there was no full endorsement of the method. So there was an agreement with, with principle but not necessarily with method. This is what the data says. Ngayon kung fanatic ka, ngayon ayaw mo mag-isip or binayaran ka mag-troll, problema mo na yan at mag-block kita mamaya. So don't worry about it. Now going back to this, <laughs> akala nyo ha, akala nyo ma-intimidate nyo ako, walang nga, umayos kayo dyan, umayos kayo dyan ha, umayos kayo dyan. Alright, umayos kayo dyan. Hindi tayo katulad ng mga iba na Snowflake, snowflake, alright? Betarana na tayo ng mga trolls, okay? Okay, um, now, 
this is why we have to talk about the latest polls because the latest polls tell you a lot about how actually deep inside the Filipino people are very compassionate people, right? And this is what's very, very encouraging, right? So actually, habang tumatagal yung bagong administration, habang, uh, habang nawawala, habang nawawala, wait lang ha, i-block ko rin itong syunga na tong isa, Ayan, bastos kayo, black ka agad. Ayan, di na kayo kikita. Sorry na lang, yung 50 pesos na bayad sa inyo, bawat troll, trolling. <laughs> Ayan, let's go to this. Uh... No, you have to fight back, guys. I always said that. You have to fight back. If you want to fight for truth, if you have convictions, you have to fight back. In our case, live. Alright? You have to shut down. Alright? You have to shut down ito mga manifestation of evil. You have to shut down manifestation of idiocy. You have to shut down manifestation of dictatorship. You have to shut down manifestation of tyranny. You have to shut down manifestation of dumb populism. All right? You have to fight back against it. That's what I always say. Because if you fight, then you have a chance to turn things around. And thank God, sa akin palagay, things are turning around a little bit. Now, not completely, not 100% like how I, you know, I, I, I would have envisioned for the country. But things are kind of turning. The tide is turning and it's turning for the best. Or at least for the better. And dito natin makita yan. So if you look at it, mga kameta, eto mga survey na yan. Okay, eto. Interesting yan. So actually, tumataas yung numero ng mga tao, alright, tumataas yung numero ng mga tao na sumusuporta dito sa International Criminal Courts probe into allegations of crimes against humanity sa ilalim ng dating administration. Okay? So, more Filipinos are now supporting the ongoing investigation of the International Criminal Court into the previous administration than in previous surveys. So, ito, base sa isang survey conducted from December 8 to, 20, uh, to 11 last year found that 53% of the Filipinos support the ICC should investigate drug-related killings during the Duterte administration. It was, compared, uh, it was composed of 25% who strongly approve and 28% who somewhat approve. So that's a solid majority, all right, of Filipinos saying that ay dapat pumasok na ICC at investigahan na yan. So that also tells you that tingin ng tao ay yung mga domestic institutions are not doing their job, right? And they have uh, what you can say uh, an instinctive grasp that the principle of complementarity is perfectly uh, uh, applicable here because when the domestic institutions are not doing their job, you're talking about tens of thousands of EJK and then ilan lang nahuli, na mga alo, abusado, then you have a problem, right? Now, meanwhile, ito yung, ito yung guys, ha? yung mga nagdi-disapprove dito, ayan, yung mga trolls, tingnan mo, malapit na kayo maging 3%. Papunta na kayo dyan. Only 21% ang ayo dito sa ICC probe na yan. Only 21%, guys. Wow. Wala na. <laughs> Sabi ko, malapit na kayo maging 3%, eh. Only 20%, barely. Barely 1 out of 5 Filipinos lang ang ayo sa ICC. Oh, ito siguro yung mga nanonote kayo, ano? Senator P. Robin P. O mga fans ni Bato. Yung mga ganon. Yan. Ganon! So, only 20%. 20% na lang kayo, eh. Ayan, 20% lang ang ayo dito. Alright? And... And the undecided also is going down from 31% to 26%. And gets go, I think the number of undecided will keep on decreasing and decreasing and lalaki at lalaki number of for ICC. Because it's, an, it's not only that the majority of Filipinos for, are for ICC probe, it's that more and more Filipinos throughout the months are moving in that direction. Alright? So malaking bagay yan mga kameta, no? Only 1 out of 5 Filipinos. Barely 20%. Barely over 20% lang ang ayo dito sa ICC probe. Vast majority of Filipinos want this ICC probe. This just tells you a lot, mga kameta, when it comes to where the heart of the Filipino people stands. The Filipino people want decisive leadership, gets ko yan. The Filipino people want disciplined leadership, gets ko yan. The Filipino people want to fight against drugs, gets ko yan. Good yan. Agree ako dyan. But the Filipino people also realize when something is not so right. And mukhang gets ng tao na, well, tama na meron tayong laban. Uh, meron tayong uh, kampanya laban sa pinagbabawal na droga. It has to be done in a certain way, in a good way. And ngayon, 
Very important. Now, nawawala yung climate of fear. Ngayon na naging ano na lang si tatay, nanggugulo lang diyan sa ano, ngayon na nagli-lift na yung cloud of fear, you're seeing that more and more people feel comfortable with the idea of justice. You see fewer and fewer people undecided about this. And you see very relatively few people, barely one out of five, ay ayo pa rin dito sa ICC dahil na mahal, na, mahal nila yung mga nag-oversee ng isang failed, fake, brutal drug war. Alright? So, yun yung point ko eh. I think ang gusto ng Pilipino, ang ating mga kababayan, is a drug war na hindi bara-bara. They want the smart war, not a dumb war. Right? So, yun yung point nila. At because of that, open sila dito sa idea ng ICC coming to the picture. Now, let me be very absolutely clear about this, mga kameta. Let me be absolutely clear about this, mga kameta. Okay? For me, this is... This is... Uh, this is something something that is emotionally and morally important to me. Emotionally more important to me. Because for a long time, we talked about moral crisis. And, and, and let me talk about moral crisis, guys. This is important. You know... I suggest you guys read this book, Ordinary Men, by Christopher Browning. And also, I think there's nasa Netflix yung movie. Na yan. It's a story of how a few ordinary people turned into crazy fascist uh, accessories. There's actually a movie also of that. I also suggest you guys read this interesting essay by John Gray, right? Uh, entitled The Truth About Evil. The fundamental argument that these authors and this whole literature about horrible turns in, in human society tell us is this. Now, when people are in fear, when people are made to fear, when people are manipulated with propaganda, when people are misled, by disinformation and propaganda, they may fall, they may fall for very problematic, problematic ideologies. And they may be influenced by very, very bad leaders. That doesn't tell anything inherently about anyone. In fact, if you look at this essay by John Gray, and a lot of interesting essays, uh, and interventions by psychologists, etc., ang malalaman natin dito is any society, no matter what religion, no matter what faith, no matter what background, is capable of committing massive crimes or is capable of supporting massive crimes if certain conditions come together. Conditions of fear, anxiety, desperation, war, demagoguery, populism, etc. That's why we, we see anywhere in the world you can see signs of genocide. And genocidal mass violence has been happening throughout human history across different continents and civilizations. So that is why it is very important Now we fight back against, tamayan, fight back against bad, evil mind conditioning. That is very important we fight back against bad, evil populism. It is very important to fight back against bara bara dumb wars. It is very important to fight back against misinformation, about ignorance, and... At the same time, it is very, very important that we fight for conscience, for sanity, and for information. That is why it's very important kung may mga nagtatrol sa inyo live, i-live block niyan. I-live, i-call out yung mga yan. I-live, you fight back against them. Because you may not win today, you may not have won for quite some time, but one day, there might be a chance and things will turn for the better. And one day, people will realize their mistakes. One day, the good people will have more courage and more energy and more inspiration to come out and to fight for a better country. Yun po yung parati natin ginagawa dito. So yes, nagpapatawa tayo. Yes, we, we talk about, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, all sorts of things. You know, we, you know, we look at the family feud. We look at the family drama. We look at, uh, you know, all sorts of mga kababalagan sa ating mga politika. But at the end of the day, one thing that really inspired me to be a, to do this, you know, not just to go write scholarly works, not just to go to media and etc. To do this, to vlog every day. One of them was because I felt we needed this. We needed this. We need to fight every day. It's not like one etsa and then you think everything will be okay. It's not about, oh, we did two etsa and everything will be okay. No. The struggle for better Philippines is an everyday struggle. 
The struggle for sanity, the struggle for compassion is an everyday struggle. And kailangan talaga lumaban tayo and we have to fight back against this. Now, against, again, 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 again. May pimple ako, sorry, nigay ko ng konting gamot. Na pimple tayo. Saka ka-stress sa inyo. <laughs> All right? De joke lang. Ah, de, dahil sa mga biyahe and all of that, ng pimple tayo ng konti. Sabi ko nga, eh, sorry na lang. Oh, yan ang gusto ko sa vlog. Eh. Kitang-kita niyo mga imperfections natin, mga pimples natin, ganun. Anyway, um, going back to this, kaya nga sinisabi ko, you have to fight for compassion and sanity. No? Because people are fundamentally good. The Filipino people are fundamentally good people. The, it, we just need to encourage activism, civic culture. We just have to encourage people, right, to trust in their conscience and basic convictions. But at the same time, hindi pwede na criticize lang. Kaya nga sinisabi ko, ang challenge sa opposition is dapat mag-provide din sila ng alternative. Dapat mag-provide din sila ng hope. Dapat mag-provide din sila ng blueprint for dealing with crime, with drugs, and all sorts of those kinds of problems. Alright? So it's very, very important na tuloy-tuloy itong fight natin against this information. Important talaga na we, we constantly do what we're doing here. And we should not tolerate, we should not tolerate, you know, a few jackals here and there trying to distort our conversations or poison the wells and all. Dapat, yeah, hindi lang hindi matakot, dapat lumaban. Alright? And that's why, that's why sinasabi ko mga kameta, kailangan talaga may humor ka rin. Kaya nga nagpapatawa tayo minsan, nagpabardagulan. Because you need some sense of humor. Kasi kung stress ka lang parati and all of that, hindi mo masustain yan. So it's important na minsan nag, uh, you know, may may konting kalokohan, may konting humor, may konting bardagulan, ayan, block-block ng konti dito yung mga walang, ano, walang kwenta. But, at the end of the day, do not forget what is the fundamental challenge here. The fundamental challenge here is to keep on fighting against not only disinformation but against any force or any policy that brings out the worst in us we have to encourage a kind of discourse and leadership that brings the best out of us and katulad ng sinabi ko kung tinignan mo yung mga surveys vast majority of Filipinos want the ICC to come in and have a probe more and more Filipinos and even bigger majority of Filipinos 8 out of 10 ay nila sa EJK or takot sila sa EJK so that tells you where the heart of the Filipino people truly is. Alright? Okay. Alam ko na magalit na. Sige. Ano? Yes to ICC or no to ICC? But in reality, I'll say it. Of course, how I wish we were in a situation where hindi natin kailangan na ICC. How I wish we were in a situation where hindi tayo duman sa mga bara-bara drug war on drugs. How I wish we were in a situation whereby we can fight against drugs without tens of thousands of innocence or, 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 or you know, EJK cases or anything like that. Right? Every single life matters. Every single innocent life matters. That's why you need due process. Ang kailangan natin dito is palakasin yung kakayaan na ating kapulisan, ating mga law enforcement to deal with the problem of drug and criminality in a smart way, not in a dumb way, not in a bara-bara way. You cannot tatay barangay level geopolitics. You cannot tatay style solve problems in a long term kung bara-bara ka lang mag-isip. No, dapat ma- matino ka. Dapat long term ka mag-isip. Dapat institutionalized ka. Dapat may diskarte ka talaga. Dapat talaga planado yan. May vision ka. May strategy yan. May different interagency coordination yan. Hindi yan pwede basta-basta lang. And yun ang hindi natin nakita unfortunately under the previous administration. And now, more and more Filipino people are coming out and asking for justice. Now, going back again dun sa mga syunga dyan na nagko-comment na naman nagba... Uh, wait lang. Um, bakit yung mention ng mga Dilawan or Lenny and all of that here, guys? Kung meron naman talaga kayong counter-argument. Diba? Yun ang, yun ang style ng mga trolls eh. Yun ang style ng mga kulto-kulto na yan. Mga fanatics eh. And, ang style nila is every time nabubuking yung kachungaan nila, ang gagawin nila is papalitan nila yung topic and they'll try to revive past fights because they cannot face the reality of their inhumane, immoral, and palpak approach to governance. Sobrang palpak na approach to governance. Sa ka ba nakahanap ng isang grupo ng inaaway, hindi lang mga dating administration, pati yung mga sumunod na administration. Hindi lang inaaway yung mga kalaban, inaaway din yung mga kaibigan. Sa ka nakahanap ng ganyan liderato? Right? 
Sa akin nakahanap ng ganitong literato. Ayan na naman, may isa pa na yung syunga na naman nagkakomment dyan, mga ganun. Guys, please, kaysa mag-atominom tayo, okay, o, oh, yan, may isa pa na naman tayo mabrock dito. Bakit? Sinabi ko ba, ikaw ang syunga, o bakit hurt ka? O, oh. dapat di kayo masaktan kung hindi naman ikaw. Natatamaan yung iba dahil alam nila. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Okay, okay, okay. Anong pinagsasawin mo na taga-UP ka? Never forget again daw. I'm still calling for justice also for what happened during the martial law period. Okay, wag kayong mag... Kayo ang mga japex na opposition. Alright, parati ko sinasabi. Yung iba, naging opposition lang dahil hindi binigyan ng position. Yan ang mga japex na opposition. Yan ang mga walang ano. Kahit anong ibabuljak, buljak TV niyo dyan. Kayo ang hindi nagsalita sa <clears throat> lahat ng mga abuso nangyari. Kayo ang hindi nagsalita sa mga abuso ng panahon ng martial law. Kayo ang hindi nagsalita ukol sa mga abuso na nangyari. Oh, yeah, alam na natin lahat niyan. At saka, <clears throat> pag-usapan na, formally? <clears throat> Kamusta formally? Okay, alright. So, yung mga ano dyan, yung mga pa-opposition na opposition, dahil hindi binigyan ng position, umayos-ayos ka na kayo dyan. Naalala namin, wala kayong ginawa nung time na purong mga abuso nangyari. O wala kayong sinabi. Hindi lang kayo binigyan ng position, Nawala lang kaya ng, ano, <laughs> alam na this, biglang pa-opposition na opposition na kayo. Alright? Okay, anyway, thank you very much mga kameta. I know, I, this is a, this is a, this is a tough topic. This is a tough topic. Alright? Yes, we all want safe Philippines. We all want to fight against uh, drugs and all. But you have to do it uh, in the right way. You have to really do it in the right way. That's very, very important. Alright, you have to do it in the right way. Kaya nga sabi ko, hindi mo naman kailangan sunugin yung buong bahay ng mga manok para makakuha ka ng fried chicken. Pwede ka naman makakuha ng fried chicken kung kunin mo nang maayos yung isang chicken lang tapos lulutuin mo. Bara-bara mag-isip. Hindi, kailangan natin fried chicken. Sige, sunugin natin lahat. The, 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 means, the end justifies the means. Yan ang pag-iisip na doesn't belong to modern era. Pang 14th century yung ganyan mindset. Yung mga ganyan tatay style ng mindset, hindi pwede yan sa 21st century. Alright? Yun lang. Okay, ang dami na na-trigger. Maganda yan. Gusto ko yan. Na-trigger kasi alam yun, mali kayo eh. Na-trigger kayo kasi alam nyo, mali ang position nyo. At alam nyo, sumuporta kayo, kayo ng mali. Nang, in a way, kasamaan. Right? You made a big mistake. So, bahala ng Diyos sa inyo. May God judge you as He sees fit. But alam ko, yung mga sumuporta, sa mga maling mga polisiya, yung mga sumuporta sa EJ case, sumuporta sa lahat ng mga yan, bahala ng Diyos sa inyo. Alright? On that note, thank you very much. Well, in this case, bahala din ng ICC. Di ba? Dun sa mga umabuso ng mga panahon na yan. So we have very interesting developments here. And the Filipino people, alright? And the Filipino people, once again, have shown where their heart lies. Ano ang bag ko? Ikaw, ano ang bag mo? O, tingnan natin, o. Ano ang bag mo? Sorry naman sa 80, 83 followers ni ano. <laughs> Ayan. Block. Ayan. Ay, sorry. Kayo lang pala nag-aaway-aaway dyan. Okay, ikaw, Gino, ano ang bag mo? Sorry naman sa 36 followers mo. <laughs> Ayan. Yan, guys. Ganun tayo. Ha. Pag sa platforms natin. Ha. Pag sa platforms natin. Wala tayong problema sa contrarian points of view. You're more than welcome to give a contrary point of view. I am more than happy to have a debate. Love ko yan. It's, it's you know, what I do, you know, malaman, I, I love debating, no problem. But, kung bastos kayo, and you're here to poison the well of discourse and all, you're gonna get blocked, you're gonna get, you're gonna get, um, uh, you're gonna get, uh, you know what I'm saying, what you deserve. Because, ang kailangan po natin dito is a safe space for discussions like this. Dahil mahirap yung mga discussion na ganyan. Dahil these are emotionally default conversation. These are politically charged conversation. But we need to have these kinds of conversations. Kaya ako, ayan, si Softy, ayan, ibablock din natin yan, ha? Isa pa yan. Sorry naman sa, oh, fake account na naman si Softy. An! Ba, blonde, blonde. Napaka natural. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, all right? Bastos kayo dito, or you cross the lines, block kayo kaagad, and you're gonna be called out. Because we have to create a safe space for this kind of discussion. Alam nyo guys, yung mga masamang tao, yung mga trapos, yung mga diktador, alam ang style nila, they will do their best to shut down any intelligent conversation. Because that is how they stay in power. 
That is how they prevent good change in the society. That is how they bring bad change and make things even worse. That is when they bring a medicine that is even worse than the disease itself. So kaya kailangan talaga dito is you create safe spaces for discussion and you create mobilization, you create inspiration, you create motivation. Yun po ang talagang kailangan natin. So, kahit ang dami mga nagtatroll sa atin dito, pero ano yung mga wala din mga yan? Ano na lang yan? Mga huling albimbo lang ng mga yan. I want to tell, that dun sa lahat ng mga supporters natin and all, we want I will do my best here so that you have a safe space. I'll do my best here so that you can enjoy having a proper reflection here. We can have some discussion here. This is what I'm doing here. Dahil ito po yung ating obligation. As a public educator, ito po yung obligation natin. So kung anong mga kasyungan ang sasabihin, ay, ito na naman, chef master, isa pang ano, isa na naman troll. Yan. Laki nang kita nyo kaagad sa akin, ha. Ano bang going rate ngayon? 50 pesos per post? Nako, kumita pa ng 100 pesos yung may iba dyan. Solid! Ayan, hmm. mga solid na ano. Mag-solid ano. Siya nga. <laughs> Ayan, isa pa yan. Okay, block din natin. Okay, ganda, ganda. Natutuwa tayo dito. Maganda rin. Okay, ito rin. Ayan, block. Ay, finalo kita, sorry. Block. <laughs> yeah, so we want to have, what we want to happen is we want all our platforms to be safe. Alright? Madali lang naman sa atin yan. Okay, anyway, thank you so much again lahat ng, ano, sa ating mga kam kameta. Thank you for, for, your uh, constant support through these years. Kayo pong nagbibigay ng lakas sa atin. Of course, kasama din yung ating, ano, uh, <laughs> yung, yung engagements nyo, yung comments nyo, it, 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 it's what keeps us going. So please continue to support anyone who speaks truth to power. Whether ito ay Dilaw power, ito ay Pink power, ito ay BBM power, ito ay Tatay Bara Bara power, you have to speak truth to power, right? That is very important thing. And at the same time, we have to respect contrarian views, but we are not obliged to respect disrespectful people, mga bastos, mga shunga, mga walang kwenta. They have, we have to protect our spaces from these kinds of people. It is very important. I don't believe in dignified silence when, when the whole house is burning down. No, no, no. This is a time when you have to act, you have to fight, and you have to, to really make sure na ma-inspiring tao na tuloy-tuloy ang laban for a better Philippines. Ito lang mga gawa natin. This is the least we can do for our country. This is the least we can do for our country, guys. Maya naman tayo kay Rizal. Maya naman tayo doon sa lahat ng mga ninuno natin na kung ano-ano mga subscription nila. Tignan naman naman yung mga gumbors ng mga others. This is the least we can do for them. On that note, maraming salamat mga, ka uh, mga, mga kababayan. Thank you very much. Doon sa mga iba na hindi nagdi-disagree sa atin for emotional reasons because obviously the data is on my side as always I'm correct uh, when I base it on data um, I hope you know we don't need to disagree we don't need to be disrespectful okay lang naman mag-disagree kayo sa akin for whatever reason pero please please all right let's keep it respectful and without within certain boundaries I did that in Facebook we're very successful good luck sa inyo kung mag-troll kayo sa Facebook o kawawa kayo we have done that also on YouTube. I'm very proud of what we have achieved in YouTube. And soon we're going to achieve that also on TikTok. I'm very sure. We're going to make sure na yung mga bastos, mga walang kwenta, mga trolls, tanggal lahat mga yan. Alright? Thank you rin sa engagement at tumas engagement natin. So yes, maybe after all, ICC is coming. And guess what? Mukhang more and more Filipinos are supportive of ICC coming to the Philippines. On that note, thank you very much. God bless and talk to you soon. Inshallah.